Although only 34 days long and with relative light casualties, 161 dead of which 119 were soldiers and 42 were civilians, the Second Lebanese War, also known as the 2006 Israel Hezbollah War, had implications which we feel right up to the present time. Lebanon had become to Israel what Vietnam had been to the United States, a disaster of huge proportions. There was opposition to continuing the war once the 40-kilometer buffer goal had been achieved. This included a number of very high-ranking IDF officers who resigned in protest, and the opposition permeated right through Israeli society. The terrorist attacks and rockets falling onto Israeli settlements and towns in the north had not abated with the withdrawal to the 40-kilometer buffer zone following the First Lebanon War. In 1999, Ehud Barak became Prime Minister after a resounding defeat of Benjamin Netanyahu in the Israeli general election. The main plank of Barak's manifesto was to remove all Israeli troops from Lebanon within the first year of his premiership. Within 10 months of coming to power, Barak had succeeded in pulling the last remnants of the Israeli troops out of Lebanon. However, this was carried out without the full commitment of the IDF general staff, many of whom opposed the unilateral move. It was also carried out almost in total secrecy to ensure that the retreat, which it was, was done without causing any casualties to the retreating troops. In fact, not one single Israeli soldier was wounded during the withdrawal. The retreat was viewed as a victory for Hezbollah, which was now perceived in the Arab world as an important player in the dangerous neighborhood of the Middle East. Moreover, Israel's enemies, particularly Iran, viewed the Israeli superpower in a new light. This superpower, which had overcome the strongest Arab armies in the area time and time again, had been unable to defeat a mere militia, which had originally been set up to help the Shiite communities in southern Lebanon. Israel's future deterrent feature was seriously undermined. From 2000, when the last Israeli troops left southern Lebanon, Hezbollah had begun strengthening its forces in southern Lebanon and began adapting its tactics to the new scenario. The war had had far-reaching effect on Israeli society. More than 4,000 rockets had been fired at the northern towns and settlements. This was the first time that the home front was under constant attack and for so long. Tsahal, the IDF, had failed to stop the bombing at the end of the First Lebanon War. The war had left Israelis viewing the political leadership in a very adverse manner, which had begun to drift onto the army leadership as well. As a result, the Second Lebanon War should be remembered as the turning point of the decade. Although the war was precipitated by the ambush, killing and abducting of two Israeli reserve soldiers on the 12th of July 2006, the seeds of the conflict go back to the draw in 2000. Hezbollah had begun attempting to abduct soldiers as early as October 2000. It was clear from the testimonies provided to the Commission of Inquiry, which had been set up after the war and headed by retired judge Eliyahu Winograd, that there was enough evidence available to the IDF to realize that Hezbollah had undergone a fundamental change in its outlook regarding the future conflict with Sahel. Thus, on the 12th of July 2006, Hezbollah attacked an Israeli patrol, killing three soldiers and abducting two more, Woody Goldwasser and Eldad Regev. They had caught the Israeli forces at their most vulnerable, the period of handover between two separate reserve units. Soldiers were in switch-off mode, worrying more about how long it was going to take them to get home than concentrating on the work at hand. Five more soldiers were killed, in a failed attempt to rescue the abducted soldiers when their vehicle hit a mine. Israeli Prime Minister at the time, Ehud Olmert, described the seizure of the soldiers as an act of war by the sovereign state of Lebanon, stating that Lebanon will bear the consequences of its actions and promising a very painful and far-reaching response. Israel blamed the Lebanese government for the raid, as was carried out from Lebanese territory. In addition, Hezbollah had two ministers serving in the Lebanese cabinet at the time. Hezbollah demanded the release of Lebanese prisoners being held in Israeli prisons 
including a surviving perpetrator of the coastal road massacre, Samir Kunta, in exchange for the abducted soldiers. After serving 30 years in Israeli jail, Kunta was eventually killed in Syria. Israel refused to the exchange of prisoners and responded with artillery and airstrikes on both Hezbollah and Lebanese targets, military and civilian, including the Beirut International Airport. The ground invasion began almost immediately and a naval and air blockade was imposed on Lebanon. In response, Hezbollah fired more rockets and engaged the IDF in guerrilla warfare, for which it was not prepared. The conflict raged from the 12th of July to the 14th of August 2006. The Israeli Air Force flew 11,897 combat missions. In the 1973 Yom Kippur War, it had flown 11,223 missions, even though the war was significantly longer. It flew twice as many combat missions than they had flown during the whole of the First Lebanon War, during Shlomo Galil. The effectiveness of these airstrikes remains controversial. For example, only 100 out of 12,000 rocket launches were destroyed. On the 30th of July, the Air Force bombed the village of Kana, killing 28 civilians, of which 16 were children. This caused an outcry throughout the world, and as a result, the UN Security Council approved a resolution 1701, which brought the hostilities to an end. The two Lebanese wars and the 24-year occupation of southern Lebanon had left deep scars in Israeli society. Besides the belief that the wars had been abysmal failures, the trauma caused division within a society, leading to the downfall of Ehud Umad's government and the revival of Benjamin Netanyahu's political career. Strategically, the conflict illustrated how ineffective as a powerful local superpower Israel had become, and it was not able to deal with guerrilla war undertaken by a mere militia. Many Israelis openly question whether anything substantial had been achieved by 24 years of occupation of southern Lebanon. <laughs>